Hi, welcome back to the Reading Corner with Miss G. For more great stories, subscribe here. Today we're reading Sarah Morton's Day, a day in the life of a pilgrim girl. You also want to check out Samuel Eaton's Day, a day in the life of a pilgrim boy. Both of these children are living in the 1600s at the Plymouth Plantation. So today, let's find out what life is like for a girl about 400 years ago. All right, so this starts off with November 12, 1627. The first pilgrims came to Plymouth Rock in 1620. That's 400 years ago. So this happened seven years after the first pilgrims came. All right, November 12, 1627. Good day. Oh, one other thing. They use old King James English, so there might be some words you're not sure of. Hang in there. You might want to check them up. I'll try to help you out a little bit along the way. All right. Good day. My name is Sarah Morton. My family sailed to America four years ago on a ship called the Anne. We came to seek freedom from the Church of England. First, my family settled in Holland, where I was born. Life in Holland was hard for us. So we set sail for the new world. My father died that first winter. This spring, mother married Goodman Kipton. I'm learning to call him father and I'm trying hard to earn his love. Come thee with me. Let me show thee how my days are. This is my village. It is called Plymouth Plantation. At sunup, when the cockerel crows, I must get up and be about my chores. I put on my overgarments. Okay, check out all the clothes she wears. Okay, so first she puts on a petticoat, then stockings, and then garters. She has to tie up her stockings. Then she puts on another petticoat, another, the third petticoat, her waistcoat, so she's got four layers on, then her cough, which is her hat, her apron, she ties on a pocket. They didn't have pockets, so they had to tie on a pocket. It was more like a little pouch or purse. And her shoes. Wow. And roll my bedding into the corner. The fire is mine to tin. I throw brush on the red coals to make them dance. Mother and I make the hasty pudding. I lay the table with clean cloths, bowls, and spoons. I serve mother and my new father first. I must stand at my place to eat. Perchance my new father will make a stool for me. So a lot of the children had to stand at the table. They didn't have chairs. With the table scraps I've collected, I go out to feed the chickens. Because I've forgotten to latch the pin, I must run our hens a game of chase. Just to catch them. At milking time, I find my best friend, Elizabeth Warren, at the pen. As we milk, we tell each other our secrets. Today, I tell her of a dream about my real father. I miss him often, but I do not speak of him to anyone save Elizabeth. I do not wish to seem ungrateful to my new father. Elizabeth likes to remember the time before she came here to the new world. She tells me of shops, in England full of colored ribbons and affairs with women dancing. After milking, I muck the garden to make it rich for planting next spring. So she's fertilizing it. The muck is heavy and I must often stop to rest. Hurry along, Sarah, mother calls from the door. Oh, nary, I'm caught idle again. Idle means not doing anything. I think she was doing something. I am to pound spices this day. Our house will have a pleasing scent. The thump, thump, thump of mother's churning keeps me company. I wish I could tell mother about my dream, but she is quiet today, and I have often enough gotten the rod for speaking out of turn. In colonial days, children were to be seen and not heard. They were not allowed to speak unless spoken to. That is not the way today. Next, 
next, Mother and I prepare the midday meal. When my new father comes home for dinner, he seems pleased with the rich pottage and warm Indian cornbread that we have made. After dinner, it's time for my favorite task. I draw vinegar to polish the brass. If I am patient and rub the salt and vinegar slowly, the kettle will truly shine. So you use vinegar and salt. Of a sudden, I hear a warning shot from the meeting house on the hill. It means a ship has been spotted. Perchance we will have some visitors on tomorrow's tide. I pray that they won't be people who wish us harm. Mother says I may fetch Elizabeth. We run to the top of the hill to see the ship, but it is still a tiny speck at sea. I dare not wait to see more. It is time for my lessons. My new father thinks I show a talent for learning. I am grateful, for in many families, girls are not spared from their chores for lessons. My fingers are clumsy around the chalk, but it gets easier. Someday, I may be able to read mother the letters she gets from her relations in England. After the lesson, Elizabeth is waiting for me. I show her my father's new gift. He has made me a knicker box. Elizabeth and I take turns shooting. We keep score with scratches in the sand. Today, my marbles go through the arches, more ready. Hers bounce back to her. I am winning, but the sun is beginning to lower and I must get back to my chores. I feed the fire to heat the pottage again and milk the goats once more. The big brown goat is troublesome. The more I push, the more she kicks. I will have a mark to show from her tomorrow. She's gonna have a bruise. As I return from milking, my new father is coming home. He has news of the ship. It carries visitors to our village. There's much talk about where to lodge them and how to portion out the stores, how to share the food. After we've eaten, my new father quizzes me on my verses. I have been learning this one by heart since last Sabbath. It has words to turn my tongue into a knot. Psalm 100. A song for confession. Shout ye triumph triumphantly to Jehovah all the earth. Serve Jehovah with gladness. Come before him with singing joy. Know ye that Jehovah he is God. He made us and not we his people and sheep of his pasture. Enter ye his gates with confession, his courts with praise. Confess ye to him, bless ye his name, for Jehovah is good, his mercy is forever, and his faith unto generation and generation. This evening, Father is pleased with my learning. He hugs me with pride. Perchance he does like having a daughter. Mother calls for me. We set off for the spring to fetch water for tomorrow. We look out to sea and see the ship. Perchance, mother will have letters and a bolt of new cloth tomorrow. Now, there is time for quiet conversing. Mother speaks first. She asks how I'm liking my new father. I can truthfully say that I'm becoming fond of him. It has been many months since I have seen mother seem so glad. The air gets chill as we fill our buckets. It is getting toward sundown. The village quiets as we turn homeward. Father and mother talk in the candlelight. I bid them good night. I get my bedding ready and put my overgarments in the chest. Though I am almost grown, I tell the day's events to my puppet. I tell her about the ship in the harbor, winning knickers from Elizabeth and my dream. And best of all, I tell her of my new father's pride in my learning. It has been a fine day. I say my prayers and thank God for his bounty. Fare thee well. God be with thee. All right, so for more great stories, subscribe here and don't forget to check out Samuel Eaton's Day.
All right, see you next time.